Welcome to Crazy Nuts, 10 minutes or less. I'm Jonas. And I'm TNT Dynamite, the explosive one. Let's start the timer. Boom. 10 uh, minutes or less. TNT. Yeah. So you have traveled before and taken like a video game device with you. Oh, you know, uh, yeah. Yeah, like when you went like back home, you took your Xbox or whatever. How would you live without it? Um, Did you have any problems? How do you breathe? Did I have any problems? Did you have any problems with like airport security or anything with your Xbox? <laughs> Funny you should mention that, Jonas, because, yes, they made me remove it from my bag before, I mean, yeah, before boarding. When I go through uh, TSA. Oh, do you have it in your carry-on? Yeah, I had, I had like, a, uh, I had a bag and I had my backpack when I go on a plane. Oh, okay, I gotcha, gotcha. So two, two pieces of carry-on with me. Yeah. And that's really all I take with me. Oh, wait, no. No, I just had my backpack it, with me. They just had you put it through security separate? No. Oh, no, I had my big suitcase, and then I had my backpack. I don't freaking remember. Either way, yeah, I had to remove the goddamn Xbox that was in my backpack from the backpack, put it on the thing, and they had to freaking scan it with a bunch of freaking probes or whatever. They had to get my Xbox an enema, yeah. and, and then I got to Yeah, so, and, and like, so back in the day, I tried to take my Super Nintendo to my mom's. Mm -hmm. Like, it was, it was, I mean, this was like, in after 2000 it was like so but i just took wanted to take my super nintendo when i was going out there mm -hmm. and they literally yeah they i went through security and they were like sir will you come over here with us and they like ran all these things in my bag to make sure there wasn't explosives in it or whatever so yeah, that's what they do now yeah but there was a story that a man had a ps3 in his luggage and it was so disgusting that they thought it was a bomb and like it was so gross that they they didn't recognize that it was a playstation what do you mean it was gross like it was like you know like sometimes people don't take care of their stuff yo <laughs> like he really didn't it says crusty playstation leads to bomb scare at boston airport the console was such a degraded condition the tsa agents didn't recognize it so obviously it wasn't a bomb but like, what do you, what does this dude do? Like, eat peanut butter and jelly off the top of it? The real like, is it as is how is it so degraded? Yeah, it's like he just he just like he it was melted. He like he would like do dabs <laughs> off it. He like he pooped I'm, on it. I'm assuming that it didn't have the cover on it. Number one, number one, it didn't have the cover. <laughs> he just brought it without the cover on or it. It was like missing, like it, because like it, it's embroidered. I mean, embroidered. It's like embossed all over the entire thing. PS3, PS4, whatever it is. Yeah, I don't know, man. Maybe these uh, security agents were just boomers. <laughs> You're like, I don't know. It's... They're like, what is this? I don't know what a PS3 is. That doesn't exist. Yeah, if it doesn't blow up the plane, it's going to blow up your mind, young man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Playing all these gosh darn We have a brain games. bomb on our hands right here. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta take you back to security and probe you a little bit. <laughs> so, but yeah, like, it's just, yeah, I guess, I mean, I guess if you have like, but it's weird because. They don't do that when you have like a laptop because I've traveled with a laptop and I I mean I take the laptop out of the bag and put it through the scanner separately, but yeah, they didn't I, like I, I didn't pull have to me take it out of like the carrier or anything. I don't think. Yeah, but yeah, I don't know, man. Like, they say all electronics though because they don't want any electronics getting on. Yeah, I but mean, now they got them goddamn ghost guns. Oh, what? <laughs> Are they the 3D printed guns? Is that what you mean? Oh, uh, dude, I'm about to get all Fox News in here. Yeah, get Fox News. <laughs> <laughs> They have these, they have these freaking ghost guns that are just like you could make them on your three D printer. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, I've, they, that's been a thing for a long time because they're yeah. trying to ban the the um, ban the 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 prints from being put online, yeah, but they're like open course. source and free. Of course, leave it to the freaking libs to take away all of our rights. the registered gun that keeps everyone safe. Yeah, dude, that's I get it. <laughs> You know, just let people who can't buy guns just make one on their own. <laughs> Next, they're going to come for our triggers. Yeah, right. <laughs> no guns can have triggers. Yeah, like, spoiler right. alert, the 3D printer doesn't come with a trigger plan for the... It's just a gun <laughs> with no trigger. You have to throw know. it at someone. I have to admit that I do think that's kind of that is kind of wild that there's actually something out there where you can just 3D print like a, a single shot gun, handgun. That's nuts. Yeah, it's pretty weird. It's like, you know, like... All you need is there's no there's no really age limit on getting a 3D printer. 
Or even right, how to right. Make I mean, things. it's enough of a gun that if you wanted to walk up to someone and surprise them that wasn't expecting you're going to kill them and just shoot them in the head or something, you can get one shot, throw that thing in the trash, and like, yeah, yeah. It's and, like, yeah. I mean, you ain't going to get in a gunfight with a 3D printed gun, but like, if you no. just need one shot, yeah. And people, man, people are on edge, man. People are on edge. That's for damn sure. Yeah, people uh, are pretty crazy, man. I've it's never- been crazy out here. I've never had anything so disgusting that the TSA were like, uh, we're going to have to take you in. Yeah, or you could have had CBD in Russia if you're a WNBA player. Oh, and get, and my get. gosh, dude. She's you're still there, dude. Brittany she's, Granier. She's still locked up, dude. She is. She's she gonna, is. like, yeah, they're going to, I mean, she'll be there a bit, dude. Apparently, she said that she's being treated well, though. Yeah, but, like, she still could be in jail in Russia for, like, a decade because she had that stuff. It's illegal as hell there. It is. And uh, contrary to popular belief, Russia does not, uh, like, the American sensibility with uh, certain topics like uh, LGBTQ race, stuff, race and, like, yeah, sexuality are not shared everywhere. So Russia no. don't really play They're that. very anti-gay. Yeah. Yeah, they don't play. They're also anti-black, Jonas. Contrary, yeah. <laughs> contrary to what you may think, they don't really, they don't really mess around with black people either. Yeah, so. I heard that there was a, uh, there was a Russian uh, advertisement. Yeah, I said it. There was a Russian advertisement that happened where uh, there was a an African American male who got the attention of a bunch of uh, Caucasian Russian women. I don't even know if they're Caucasian, if they're Russian. And uh I don't either. And he I'm was, Caucasian. I think he was just getting a kiss from all of from both of the uh young ladies in in the uh in the okay. advertisement. And the company received death threats and complaints about the visuals of the uh of like interracial yes. love. To oh, the my. point to the point where the company, as in America, would have stood their ground. The company made a public apology and removed the advertisement. Oh, we're sorry that we had interracial love. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. It's like 1938 over there in Russia. Yeah. yeah. Look it up. It happened. My lord. Yeah, it's a little nuts, man. It's a little nuts. It's a little nuts. But you know, you know, it is what it is. They thought that you know they thought people were ready for that in Russia. It ain't. I mean, it's very funny because they, got, they ain't ready to have nice things because yeah, they're getting sanctioned <laughs> into the ground. <laughs> but we got to remove the Nazis from Ukraine. Look, I don't want to make it about this. I don't want to make it about anything else. Hey, no, man, I got no, I have no qualms with the Russian people. The Russian people are very nice. Let's talk. Let's talk more about crazy quirks and <laughs> dude. <laughs> Not about I people are insane, dude. Like. I went out this morning for a little bit, and like people driving on Saturday morning are dangerous. <laughs> like, talk about like Saturday morning, like there was like I almost got like there was a fire truck, yeah, and then I almost got hit by another fire truck at the next intersection. Yeah, <laughs> going to two different places. I was like, "What the hell? Two fire trucks going two different places in like two minutes." Then uh, I, I then tell a, you, man, you asked for it though, leaving the house on a Saturday. I know, right? Then like, and then uh. And then this dude like swerved into my lane and almost hit me. And this is all within like five minutes of leaving the house. Yeah, makes sense. And then and then a lady cut me off to like turn in my lane to get in the turning lane. And I'm like, I am going to die. Then then there was a dude who was going like thirty miles an hour trying to get on the freeway for like a whole the a line of. I'm like. What is happening at 10 a.m. in the morning on Man. A Saturday? Like, hey, look, brother. I drive every day just about, dude, because I go. I have to commute to get to work. So we're talking like a 30-minute drive there, 30-minute drive back, both in rush hour. Yeah. Obviously, the, and, and of course, like the right amount of rush hour, because I work night shift, but of course, the rush hour has to be, I have to be traveling with the rush hour to work and with the rush hour for people going to work. Yeah, right, home. right. You're doing the opposite, but they're still rush. you're still get, catching the rush hour, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm no, I'm going, I'm like, I'm going towards downtown when I'm coming home, so I'm stuck in rush hour. Oh, yeah, what I mean is you're going home, but they're going to work, but it's, you're still yeah. In the rush yeah, hours, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so uh, believe me, I see it, I experience it, I live it. I, I have a point right now, seriously, where I've driven to work enough where I know, okay, I get on the freeway until this exit. I get off at this exit. I take the frontage road back.
basically all the way there. Because it's just easier than being on the freeway. It really is. Yeah. It Sometimes really is. it is, man. I feel you. And I've, I'm telling you, man, I've had to honk my horn multiple times where it's like somebody's not paying attention. They try to merge over, and I'm like, no. Nah, yeah. Yeah, nah. dude. No. Yeah, people so are really it, it gets bad with nuts that out here. there, man. It, it really does. Like it, nothing really surprises me anymore. Yeah. So, <laughs> but anyways, that's all the time we have for this episode. Go to thecrazytown.com and subscribe for Jonas. Uh, we are out.